Oh shit, they got the, uh, no, y'all remember the, um, the little, the little nigga that got the goddamn, well, I'ma just let him say it, but it's the Michael Mitchell inter interrogation room of footage of when the boy had found the blood body in the trunk on the LA, uh, the LA state trooper and shit. But yo, you finna go ahead and get into this shit, bro. Y'all make sure y'all like, comment, subscribe on the YouTube. If y'all watching the YouTube, man, let's go ahead and get into this shit, man. I got my goddamn split flip. Y'all make sure y'all go ahead and have y'all split flip. And we in the motherfucking Smoke Nation with it on Twitch, bro. Y'all make sure y'all come to the Twitch, bro. We live right now at TJ Smokes. Come tune in, you feel me? We in this bitch, man. I'm saying. Go ahead and get so to I the know video. we all remember this viral video of the Louisiana State Trooper finding a dead body in the trunk. I popped the trunk. Yep. Saw so there's a dead body in the trunk. We got the interrogation video and things get really interesting. But before we get into that, let's recap of what happened in the original video. The state boys is on the highway. Do the speed limit state boys don't play. The state boys on the interstate. Make sure your license cool and your tags up to date. State boys on the highway. They stopping at your thing. Disney Channel. You're now watching Disney Channel. State boys, body cam footage from your Louisiana State Police, multiple sheriff offices, and city police. A Louisiana State Trooper was patrolling and seeing an orange and black Camaro speeding doing 73 right. in the 55 miles per hour zone. Hey, good afternoon. I'm Trooper Nielsen, Louisiana State Police. The reason why I stopped here was for speeding. You know how fast you're going? No, sir. 73 and a 55, so it's 18 over the limit. The driver was also smoking marijuana. Is there any weed in the car? Yes or no? It's just a doobie in the ashtray, like, okay. other than that, is Anything like, else? Is After not knowing where his address was, the officer got kind of suspicious. All right, where are you headed right now? I was headed to, I was headed back home. Okay. Where's home? What's your address? No, stop, stop. Come here. Where do you live? It's easy. It's easy to answer this. Where do you live? And after getting consent to search the car, the trooper noticed bullet holes in the car as well. Hey, all right, now, step here. When did all this happen? When did all that happen? That happened. When? My brother, he said it. How happened, long ago? Like, Days? Yeah, it Okay, days. come back. Just leave this here. Then things get really strange when a random guy pulls up okay. and tells the trooper that the victim family is looking for that car and that the driver is missing. Yeah. Hey, okay. Know? Okay. His family in Monroe is looking for him. Uh, they sent me out here. To okay. Park. All right. Somebody they pulling up behind me, Scooter. Let. All right. Thank you, fella. Hey, now. How Who you are you? I'm they don't scare me to death. Well, how are y'all here? Because my people from Mon that's them on the phone. What do you mean they were looking for him? They looking for him. The car missing. Hey! Okay, give me your phone. Hey, man. And to make it even stranger, both the victim and the suspect is named Michael. All right, let me ask you something. Did you give me your right name? Yes, sir. What's your name? Michael. Take, Michael doing you, I swear to God. Take then the officer finally decided to open the trunk. And sadly, it was someone in there. See? Uh, I'm gonna do the obvious thing I want to do. I'm, 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 I'm hey. Yep. Back in 2022, I lost two very important people God, in my life, big figures. It really wasn't until February of- Put your hands up, put your hands up, put your hands up. So let's talk about the investigation. How did that go? Where did that go? Let's talk about that. You gonna take those handcuffs off or you gonna come for a little long? You're not gonna run out if I take them off, are you? All right. Tell me why we're here, my man. They called me on the phone and I was at home. During the interrogation, Michael tried his best to separate himself from being a shooter. So basically, my friends wanted to see, they wanted to set Mike up because they know he was loaded, like, like he had money and stuff like that. They hit me up, he was like, he was like, yeah, he ain't helping me. Think with Mike, all you gotta do is just 
all you gotta do is say y'all can smoke together and then when he drop you off I'd handle it from there when the police asked who the shooter was Michael tried to blame an innocent person that had nothing to do with it which got him arrested as well alright so we got Cameron he was the shooter right what did you shoot him with he had a uh, charge nine. How do you know that? Like I saw it was like he, a charge nine. He had a um, stinky clue. Okay. Michael tried to make it seem as if he was only there to help put the body in the trunk, not the shooter. After that, shots just came out. Boom, boom, boom. Mike hit the ground. He, he was holding his stomach. He was like, bro, you shot me in my stomach. After that. He ran to the he ran to the car because he knew Mike had he knew Mike had a gun too. He went to another grab Mike gun. Mike was on the ground. He just did it to him, and that was he it. He did what to him? He shot him in the head. Okay. After that, he was like, "Pop the trunk, over here, you pop the trunk, pop the trunk." I I just grabbed his legs, threw him in there, and after that, he took he took the car, and I was like, he took the car with the body, and I was gone. After the shooting, Michael said that Cameron took the car, but returned with the car and told him to go find somewhere to dump the body. So this morning he, this morning he came and dropped, he came and dropped the car off over. He wanted me, like he wanted me to get rid of everything. Like dump the car, like I all lit together. And I was. Cause I was scared too, like I was scared he was going to do the same to me if I didn't do what he said. Cause like I'm, you see me, I'm, I can't really do nothing, I'm, he bigger than me, I can't do nothing. So I just did what he said. The detective then asked where was he going right before he got stopped by the state trooper. Now, tell me about where you drove after you picked the car up this morning. When I picked it up, I went, I went to Tallulah. I went to Tolosa again and did like, What'd you do in Tolosa? I went to go around to the So that was Michael's story for the first interview. So the detectives then went and interviewed everybody that he implicated in the story. Oh, shit. And nobody's story was matching Michael's story. How am I going to prove that one was even there? Two, that he shot him. Right now, the only person I got is you. You were driving the car. You have the opportunity because you've got the guns, right? I've got videos of you with a gun, with a Ruger, with an extended clip that you said he got shot with, that your cousin said that you only had six bullets in, which is exactly how many went into this guy's stomach before he got shot in the face. GTA Everything no. just points to you. And nothing, nothing points to Cameron. He's going to be a free man shortly. And you're going to be in here for first degree murder because you did all this by yourself with no help. The detectives then tell that Michael that had my heart jumping, but it. that shit would have had my heart jumping. Cause let me go back, cause I was talking a little bit. But that shit would have had my heart jumping. I ain't gonna need loud nigga. Just sit there and say first degree murder. <laughs> well, what? What? Shit, man. Shit. Comment down below how y'all would feel, bro. If they would say, "Uh, goddamn, you got first degree murder." First degree. The detectives then tell Michael that his story does not match the story of the guys that he implicated. Right. 
So when I send this thing up the chain and I say, hey, Michael Mitchell didn't shoot this guy. He just, he helped set him up. He needs his legs switched, but he didn't pull the trigger. Right? Yes, sir. Because that's what my, that's what you want my report to say, right? Yes, sir. I did, I did. Well, to do that, I have to have all of my facts straight. Right, but let me tell you what, let me tell you what, right now, I've got it on two recordings. Mm -hmm. Okay? I got one that says, Smile was around the corner. He never saw me after the shooting. Me and Cam loaded the body up, and then Cam left in the car. Alright? Then I got you saying, I got Smiley saying, We heard the shooting, we drove around the corner, there was Michael Mitchell, no Cam. And you say, Cam was gone already. And then I got another story just now that me and Cam loaded up the body, he jumps in the car and leaves, and now you're just standing there? It looks Smiley has nothing to lose. Well, he has a lot to lose, but he's not involved. So he told us a story that makes sense, that's understandable. Your, your story's the one that's not, it's not jiving. When the detectives interview with the other guys Michael implicated, the real story come out, and the detectives hit Michael with facts, oh, and watch his story change. Because Smiley's done told us a different story. Okay, he says they sit in the car, him, I'm assuming Jay and Pat, mm -hmm. two dudes he don't know. He's, yeah, getting they, they, like, he's in a car for four hours with him because you just bounce and he don't know where you're at. Mm -hmm. So they're sitting around the corner and they hear, well, he don't hear it. He said one of the guys sitting next to him go, here's, did you hear that? Mm -hmm. He's like, what? Turns the radio down. He goes, that's gunshots. And then you FaceTime him. Now, mind you, we're going to get all that FaceTime stuff. We're going to get all this stuff. You FaceTime smiling. Smiley goes, what? And you were telling Smiley that you shot this dude. The guy pulled a gun on you, and you no, had to shoot no. him back. That's what Smiley said to us. No. So Smiley bounces around the corner. He said, I turned right. As soon as I hit the intersection and my lights sound across that car, and I see that body on the ground, because I stopped. He said, well, I ain't no part the, of this shit. Who's no the only person there? A black Camaro with orange stripes. Michael Mitchell and Mike. Or the big guy. Ain't nobody else there. Damn! This ain't no crime for real, man. What? What? Well, my soul, huh? No, I never, but, man. Were all of the facts out? Michael didn't confess to the shooting. Me and Mike, we, we was chilling for a few hours, like, so. The confession, he got a confession. I said, hey, he had to take me, he was like, yeah, he'll send me a few dollars for some gas. I can go get some gas. Went to go get some gas. He he left. He told me that's what he was finna do, so that's what he did. And after the, after he was finished, he told me he he was back over there. So Smiley went got gas, hung out, whatever, for like four hours. Mm -hmm. And then he texted you back and said that he's back at the spot, which is the same spot y'all were smoking at earlier in the night. Mm -hmm. With with Pat and Jay. Yeah. Okay. Right. And right now you're with still you're still with Mike. I'm still with Mike at this okay. point. Go from there. What happened after that? So after they, after they, we left the apartment house. So April, I'm ready to go home. And Mike, he was like, he kind of he, he was looking kind of frustrated at that. Like he was like blowing his breath for all. He was like, I right. threw the car in park. He was being being kind of aggressive. Where were you at right now? At, at this point, we was leaving the apartments. No, driving. Yeah, okay. like pulling out of the apartments. And he was going super fast. Hitting the corners all the way. Because when you leave the apartment, it would go make a lift. Then it would be that long, the long street, the dark street, mm -hmm. right there. So, I was getting out. He pulled around with the car facing like, the car would be facing the opposite way that we came. So you can like drive straight off. So at that point, I was getting out the car, like, all right, Mike, bro, I'm gonna fuck with you. Like saying goodbye, really. And then Mike was standing, he was standing, at that point he was standing at the car. He was like, I sit up on the car like I told y'all. Mike, he, I turned around. Mike had Mike had his gun in his hand. Like he was like drawing it towards me. And I was scared, I didn't know what to do. So I turned 
Ata Gurea Nassaru. And I need to stop shooting to the, to the bullets right now. Damn! <laughs> hey, this is right. Step in the right direction, okay? Shit. Get off your chest. He said he ain't stopped dumping until the bullets ran out of it. Oh, what the fuck you're right here, man? I'm on 18. After confessing, Michael then told detectives why he implicated Cameron as the shooter. Well, let's go to another real side point. Did Cameron have anything to do with this? So Cameron is totally innocent. Where did you come up with Cameron? Which is, you don't like him or he 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 jacked me for some money. He jacked me for a large amount of money a while back. Like that's it. But yeah, it was a he at gunpoint. But you ever be? So Cameron robbed you one time. Yeah, he at gunpoint. Cameron was eventually released, but Michael. Michael pled guilty to manslaughter and received 25 years. Damn. If you like this channel and you like videos Ooh. like this, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to the channel.